Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome to my studio and YouTube channel where I discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for oil and acrylic painters. In this video, we'll explore the earth tone pigments and color families. Hi everyone, so well, let's take a look at our earth tone families. Um, now there's quite a few of them. Um, the nice thing is there's a lot of them, and, and sometimes that can be a bad thing because there's just a lot of them. Um, so. The other thing is the colors can vary wildly between manufacturers based on where they get their uh, pigments from. Uh, as earth tones, they come from all over the world, so a Windsor Newton could be different than a than a um, uh, a Gamblin. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, for instance, like this is pigment brown seven, but this is also pigment brown seven. Uh, it's this exact same pigment, just um, cooked and roasted. Um, so it's just a nice uh, uh, fiery color now because it had been uh, cooked. We have other colors that are transparent, so like asphaltum. And this is a combination of two other pigments to get us uh, to get us into that uh, earth tone family while maintaining transparency. So let's just say there's a lot to consider with your earth tones, and so today we're just going to look at a broad overview of colors that artists might see on their palette. Okay, so let's start off with um, raw umber, burnt umber, uh, asphaltum, which tries to emulate the umbers using transparent pigments. We also have uh, raw sienna, which is a, this particular one is a mix, but you can get a single pigment as well. Burnt sienna, which is a roasted raw sienna, essentially. Yellow ochre, and then gold ochre, which is a mixture, uh, has a little synthetic uh, pigment in there to help get, uh, bring up its uh, brightness and its saturation level. So let's take a look at the earth tones. All right, so here we have our piles of paint in the exact same order as our tubes that we had just earlier. All these colors correlate exactly to these colors over here. We will take a mixture of titanium white and pull down and do tints. And over here, we'll draw down and look at our transparencies, see what we can do with our glazes with these colors. Let's take a look. Okay, so the first guy we're gonna look at is uh, just raw umber. This is the fresh out of the ground, no roasting or anything. This is just raw umber. So the first thing we notice is it has a cool chocolatey color to it. Um, another property of, of your umbers, just in, in general, is that they dry really fast. Uh, raw umbers are uh, incredibly uh, uh, kind of gritty sometimes, depending on the manufacturer. And I think that grittiness, the, 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 uh, the clay and the oil just really uh, dry and oxidize quite quickly. The nice thing about it drying quickly is you can use this plus a like a lead white to do an underpainting or a Versailles painting, and it'll be dry the uh, dry to touch dry with easily with the, the next day or uh, day and a half. Um, it just dries that quickly, so you don't have to have any additives or um, uh, don't need to add anything to it. Basically, just add just just do an underpainting in lead white and your umbers. Uh, that's just nice with the uh, with all your all your earth tones uh, collectively um, will have a dr dry fairly quickly. All right, raw umber. Okay, so let's move on from raw umber to burnt umber. Uh, burnt umber is uh, actually just raw umber that's been roasted, so it has the same pigment number, uh, pigment brown seven, I believe, and it's. Uh, uh, but as you can, as you look at it, and you know by comparison to the other, uh, to the raw umber, it has a, a reddish, uh, warm color to it. Now keep in mind these. This is this particular one is Windsor Newton. Uh, other manufacturers will have it slightly different, um, and also student grade will have a slightly different color too. Um, it's uh, just because of where they get it out of the earth or who manufactures it or whatnot. So it's definitely something to look into when you're when you're looking at these. It's actually kind of cool how you can just change the properties ever so slightly by um, just heating it up and uh, altering the chemical composition just ever so slightly. And it has a, uh, how it reflects light is slightly changed to have a more, a warmer hue that you can do um, different things with. It's pretty cool. And here we go, uh, burn umber. Okay, so let's move on to asphaltum. Now, historical asphaltum is actually um, not light fast and it uh, deteriorates quite quickly uh, compared to uh, some of these other paints. Uh, and so this is actually a mixture of two colors. 
the two colors of this Gamblin. This is an older pig, older tube. So this one has um, ivory black and um, iron uh, transparent synthetic red iron oxide. Um, they've cha recently changed it so that it's. Uh, I believe they. I believe they swapped the um, black for the ultramarine, and so it has a slightly slightly bluer cast to it uh, than this particular tube. Uh, but uh, Daniel Smith makes this as, as well, this asphaltum, and it is, it's um, uh, not quite as cool. It still contain, continues to use the black. Um, but uh, anyway, so I really like it because it's not as, as opaque as the uh, traditional umbers over here. It's a, a little more transparent, uh, it doesn't dry as quickly, and it has... Um, some really nice working properties that I use for myself. Um, it's, it's just not quite as as um, doesn't quite seem as thirsty as the as the umbers. Um, mainly just because you're using two synthetic colors to emulate the the umbers. The other thing that's really nice about it is you can just add uh, uh, ultramarine or the synthetic red uh, in order to push it cool or red, depending on which way you want to go with it. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is a really nice color. Uh, I personally enjoy using um, when substituting umbers. Um, so yeah, there's uh, uh, asphaltum. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Moving down the line, we have uh, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Raw sienna is, uh, this one's a mixture um, based on uh, Windsor Newtons. Um, this one I believe is also a mixture as well, but uh, these can be mixed up and, and, and we'll see that they are very similar as the as their natural counterparts. Um, their single pigment counterparts. So, um, well, if we take a look at this one, it's, uh, it isn't quite as saturated. Uh, it doesn't have quite the tinting power, I'm sorry. It doesn't have quite the tinting strength as the, the other three next to it. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is good because it it doesn't uh, obliterate uh, colors as quickly, just because it has it has less tinting power, which is kind of nice in this uh, in this particular situation. Um, nice neutral yellow. Okay, so this is raw sienna. Okay, let's take a look at burnt sienna. Again, burnt sienna is, is just raw sienna that's been roasted. And you can see that it has a working property very similar to the umbers where it really warms up. And this one gets, th th this one really warms up to a nice, uh, a nice red, a very nice clay, uh, irony red. Um, those, you know, not quite as deep as these, but it just has a great working property, especially for, for flush tones. Um, you can always, uh, these are staples in a lot of uh, portraiture palettes just because it's, it, these have, or it doesn't take much to get you close to um, flesh tones and you can uh, quickly move it darker, lighter, um, redder, yellower. It, it, it really helps, uh, it really quite quickly you can move in one direction or the other based on the, the pigmentation of the, of the subject. Again, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Um, uh, again, all these colors would be great for uh, portraiture work. All right, so this is yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is an actually yellow pigment. Uh, we move, so we're moving out of the brown pigments and into the yellows at this point. Um, so let's take a look at this guy. And so, as you can see, we're definitely moving a lot more yellow. It's, again, it's not a very uh, high tinting color. It definitely keeps it uh, um, low chroma, low tint, and it's um, not as you know not as reddish as these guys are. Uh, the browns can certainly will absolutely get to that reddish point. But so let's pull this down a little bit more, and we can see the difference between the raw sienna and the yellow ochre, um, yeah, the yellow ochre right here, or I'm sorry, the raw sienna right there versus this yellow ochre right here. And yeah, this one certainly has, uh, seems a little, definitely not as, it's 
hard to tell on screen, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's real hard to tell on screen, but this is definitely um, a little more saturated. Not quite as neutral as the, um, as the raw Sienna right here. Um, okay, so this is our yellow ochre. Okay, so let's move on to gold ochre. Uh, now, this is one of my favorite colors just because um, uh, I tend to paint a more cerulean, a little more saturated. Uh, so this is a nice earth color, earth tone that um, has just, yeah, here we go. Now you can see it. The hue is more saturated than the colors over here. And that's because it has a, a synthetic derelite yellow uh, mixed in with it. So it's, it's, it's basically just yellow ochre plus a, plus a synthetic derelite yellow. Uh, so this is sort of a, a cheat color or, or a convenience color that I like to use. Um, yeah, I really like this color. Um, if you want, uh, the reason why I like it is because it, it starts off um, saturated. And if you want to knock it back, you, you can always... Uh, like a black or a purple or, or uh, and, uh, and other other colors to, to neutralize this and but uh, I like how it starts off um, the the value is, is lighter and it's uh, you can really see it over here on the on the on the right one over here when we start getting into our transparencies and um, yeah so but you can see it, it's definitely more saturated than our other colors over here and um, has a nice vibrancy to it not for everyone, but it's definitely one that I enjoy. So, so these are all our tints, and uh, let's move on to our transparencies. All right, so let's see how these guys look in glazes. All these colors correlate exactly to these over here, so let's begin with our raw umber. Raw umber is, um, most, like I said, most um, most earth tones, with uh, rare exceptions, are going to be uh, opaque or semi-opaque. And as you can see with this one, it um, there's not a huge difference between. Uh, you don't get a, a, a large separation between the pile and as it thins out. So we can move this around a little bit more. Yeah, let's thin this out just a little bit more. Still a little, a little thick. Okay, yeah, let's thin this out a little bit here. So I mean, you can certainly get a little bit of glaze with it. Oops, a little too much. Still get a little bit of a glaze to it. Not much, but um, you can see how thinly it kind of, yeah. Yeah, you just don't get a huge separation in value. But, uh, Okay, so let's move on to uh, Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is uh, right next to it. All right, so let's pull this guy down. And as we can tell, again, you can tell it's uh, right off the bat, it has a warmer color. And much like the properties of its, of its raw flavor, it is very, very uh, opaque. Yeah, see, yeah, you just, we just don't have much much working properties between the pile and, the, and as it thins out. But um, get a little bit of scumbly going on here. Let's see if we can't do the same with the, with the raw umber over here. Get it, see if we can get, have some uniformity here. Yeah, <laughs> just not much to work with. Okay, so let's move on to Asphaltum. Uh, again, this is Gamblin's version. Um, and as we start to play with it, you can say, oh, right there we go, right there. You can start to see just how much more transparent it is. Let's get some of this on there. Yeah, here we go. And there we go, yeah. And as we notice how you can get a lot more values with it, with this as a transparency over the, the other, the, the two umbers. Uh, and, and additionally, you can also see that uh, these colors, um, as you pull them down, they're a lot more uh, saturated than the one the, the than they are as tints. They they don't um, they tend to grade down as tints over here and uh, maintain their, their structure over here. So all right, let's move on to raw sienna. There we go. Uh, now this one is a mix, but however, it should still perform as a as an opaque or semi opaque. And yeah, here we go. So as we try to pull down the pile, thin out the pile a little bit, you can see see what I mean. Yeah, see the the value between the pile and the and as it thin. There's there's 
you know, quite a disparity there. So these, this isn't a very opaque, uh, very transparent color. Um, like you'll see in a minute here with the gold, o o gold ochre. And this out just a little bit more. Okay, so let's move on to um, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna again. This is a, another mixture, but it should still behave the, as as, a, as an opaque. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Look how this is still a really nice red color. This is uh, a lot of times if you want to tone a canvas, this is a perfect color to tone a canvas with because as you um, rub it out and get it thinner, it, it still maintains a, a really nice um, mid-value red. It's, yeah, this is a really nice, nice color. It's not, yeah, definitely a lot more saturated than as a, as a, as a, as a glaze or as a, uh, over its tint. Okay, so let's move on to uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre uh, is, is definitely an opaque paint right there. So let's pull this down. And this one should be, yeah, this is, this is very dry. This, this particular manufacturer's um, is kind of dry. And yeah, you can just see how opaque, how much covering strength this has. Let's see if we can't scumble this down a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this is a particular this particular one is just sort of a dry, <laughs> dry, dry pigment. Um, yeah, there's really not much to really not much to work with here on the on the on the glazing front, but uh, it works great for the tint. Um, or if we want to cover a lot of cover up some things, yeah. So not quite as thin as the as the sienna, but yep. So there we go. Moving on to my favorite gold ogre. Pull this down, and uh, this is a semi-transparent, so it has the the darylite and the um, um, yellow ochre in it. But yeah, here we go. Now we, you can see because it, ha it already starts off as a higher value in the pile, and then you start to pull it down. Here, oh, here we go. Yeah, look at the different values you can get out of. The, yeah, this works really well as a, as a transparency. Look at that. It's nice and saturated. Doesn't have quite. It doesn't have quite the streaks of the uh, the yellow ochre by itself. Yeah, we'll swing with that. Look, look, yeah, this almost kind of glows a little bit. That's that's that uh, darelight yellow, um, really shining through. Yeah, look at that nice trans trans uh, uh, transition right here. Yeah. That's a really nice color. It's one of my favorites, obviously. <laughs> I'm gushing about it. Gushing about paint. Anyway, so um, this is Gold Ochre by Gamblin. And um, this is a small sample of uh, many of the earth colors that you can pick up. Um, fortunately, none of these are terribly expensive. They're usually a Series 1, Series 2, maybe a Series 3. Um, so you won't break the bank if you pick up a couple uh, different um, tubes from different manufacturers. Um, find one that works for how you paint, and uh, none of these are bad. They're all good. They're all fun. They're also all light fast, and they'll last a very long time in your paint. So I appreciate you watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.